Hello everyone and welcome to our presentation about neural audio style transfer. It's essentially style transfer, but instead of using images as input, we use audio. Some of the motivations for this project were to create genre transposed music, to inspire the creation of new music, to expand upon current literature, and just to create new cool music. So when we set out to create this project, we used Doom 2016 as the inspiration. The reason for that is that the game makes very creative use of different sounds. So chainsaws and the ninth string guitar, as the game's composer at GDC 2017 explained and started to interpolate that guitar tone with that chainsaw sound. And this is what we ended up with. So it turns out that this problem can actually be treated as a style transfer problem. And this would serve as the foundation for what we would do going forward. So it turns out that this problem can actually be treated as a style transfer problem. The reason for that is that you can take the image of one spectrogram and the image of another spectrogram and you can attempt to mix uh, the content of one with the style of the other. Let's talk a little bit about the data set and the data that we used for our machine learning. So primarily we use the Free Music Archive data set or the FMA, which is a data set that contains a whole bunch, thousands of 30 second .mp3 files of various genres. Further, we also took audio clips from other different sites and other different audio clips that we could find around the internet to try out some different combinations on our finished model. So for example, we took some music from games such as Doom and Mario. Uh, we found some popular sound effects, so some claps, some horns, we found a chainsaw too, and a couple instrumentals as well, just to really push this model to its limits and see what happens when we give it different sources of audio. So now let's talk a little bit about the pre-processing pipeline. Conceptually, we were looking for a way to transform a song into an image type format and back so that we may utilize the traditional style transfer techniques with little friction. This proved to be a rather nuanced process given that the way to convert audio to images needed to be completely invertible. The typical Fourier transform and spectrogram plotting methods are lossy and non-invertible, so we ended up working with a method called the short time Fourier transform, which applies essentially the same transformation, but it does so in a lossless, invertible way. So the first step of pre-processing was really straightforward. All we needed to do was select the audio files which had the same sample rate and the exact same length. This ensured that our array representations in the style transfer step were guaranteed to be the exact same length. This step is not explicitly necessary, however it makes working with the style transfer model later much easier. So now let's talk a little bit about the short time Fourier transform, or the STFT. So the STFT is essentially the same thing as the typical Fourier transform, except that it converts the signal through a windowing method. Utilizing the STFT allows us to preserve the phase information, which is lost in a typical Fourier transform. This allows us to completely invert our spectrogram into a listenable audio file. So now that we've performed our short time Fourier transform, we just need to compute our spectrogram by stacking up the various frequency domains that we have through time. We would then save the spectrogram in CSV format, so not as an image as you typically would, so that we can save our computed spectrograms for later training. So now that we have our spectrogram image, we're now able to go onto the style transfer methods. So here's where we take our spectrogram image and the machine learning models to actually perform the style transfer. We'll go into more detail on this in upcoming slides. So lastly, when we receive our style transferred spectrograms back from the machine learning models, we have a relatively simple step. We just have to convert our spectrogram back to an audio file that we can listen to. Since we created our original spectrograms using the STFT, we can use the inverse STFT function to transform the image back into a waveform. Once we do that, it's just a matter of saving the waveform as a wave file and listening to it. So now we'll quickly talk about the algorithm that we used. So we use a convolutional neural network um, to take the content and the style of uh, two different songs and merge them together. The content image and the style image are used in an initial setup process. So the content image is run through the model initially and at specific layers that we pick, we get out, um, we, we get out the feature maps and we use those to set up the content loss, which will be used uh, in the main pipeline right at that point. Uh, at the style for the style loss, we tend to use multiple different layers, and so we'll have multiple different feature maps being set up for multiple different style loss layers. Um, once the initial image is run th through the model, it's actually run through as a trainable parameter. So we run that image through the model. We use that we calculate the total loss between the content loss and the style loss, and we continue, we, throughout the epochs, we try to modify our input image to minimize those, those, that total loss in the respective content and style losses. So 
as I showed right here, that middle that middle uh, image, the middle part of the image uh, of this slide is our main pipeline where we run through the initial model and we, you know, calculate those content and style losses that we initially set up. From there, we will finally get an, a modified image, which is, you know, which minimizes the total loss and is kind of our best combination between uh, the content and the style. And we convert the image, quote unquote, which is just a spectrogram back into um, audio, which we can listen to. From there, um, we've kind of finished the part, we finished the model. And so now we'll be talking about validation. Realistically, validation of style transfer is extremely difficult as the model is trained on each individual set of content, style, and input images. Um, and it doesn't generalize. So we did try various approaches. Um, however, on the professor's suggestion, we decided to do a single blind qualitative review as our validation, uh, at least for now. And so we found that although people couldn't always agree on what the genre of the output was, um, most people kind of agreed that the genre, the output had changed relative to the inputs and it was a merging of the two inputs. Um, and it was of good, of decent quality. For the final report, we, uh, we hope to include some automated validation, perhaps by calculating the MSC between the current spectrogram and an average of the inputs. And by current, I mean the output spectrogram. And then we would also like to try calculating the MSC between two different content images um, after they've been before they've been applied this on the style transfer and after they've been applied on the style transfer with the same style image. And now we'll be talking about our hyperparameters. So there are a few hyperparameters that we use. Firstly, uh, the content and style layers just represent which particular layers that we've chosen to calculate out our content and style losses. Um, from there, we also have content and style contribution, which is for those particular layers, each layer will have a loss uh, that is used, to, that is summed up in to calculate the total style or content loss. So how much we wanna weight that particular layer is what we get from uh, content and style contribution. Uh, learning rate we discussed in class, which is used in our optimizer. Um, gamma, lambda, or uh, weight decay, whatever you want to call it, that is used in our, that's the regularization hyperparameter that we've discussed in class. Style weight and content weight are how much we weight the total style loss or total content loss in our total loss calculation. So it's like a weighted sum. And then epochs are how many epochs we ran. So that covers all the hyperparameters. And now we'll be talking about our results. Um, some of these will only just mention the header. Um, some of them will go more in depth just because we have so much information to provide. So firstly, content loss is more important than it seems. Pre-processing and post-processing of spectrograms is very important. Content loss, uh, content image is a much better starting point than white noise. Uh, VGG was not not actually necessary. And hyperparameters aren't that impactful, but many epochs are. This is just because we start off with the content image, so we're much closer to the output image space. So tweaking the hyperparameters didn't help much, but using many epochs to really lower that loss and decrease the noise was very helpful. Additionally, songs were songs with vocals were poor candidates to choose as the style image because the style image was the one that was warped the most to map onto the content image. So those vo vocals got warped. Um, and sounds with very different instruments worked well together because they were represented spatially in our spectrograms uh, in very far apart if there were different noises. And so the model didn't really have to choose between them and average and create noise that wasn't really realistic or computer generated. Whereas if they were similar, it would average. So here I have two samples to show you guys. So the first one is a chainsaw mixed with a guitar loop, similar to what happened with Doom. So take a listen. <laughs> And this next one is country music mixed with R&B, so take a listen. So these are two very good results that we got with our model. So now we'll be doing our concluding remarks. So firstly, pre and post processing are more important than the actual model or CNN, any basic real CNN will do. And the algorithm really inflates the amount of noise. So many epochs are needed to ensure a good quality output. Um, actually finding appropriate data is also very challenging. The data needs to have similar sample rates and similar lengths, and not all songs would merge well together. 
Uh, with more time, there's a lot we could do, you know, make style transfer more precise, handle cases with inappropriate audio, trying out more genres and combinations, and doing more validation. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Have a good day.